I'm Mark Rossheim, president of Rossheim Designs, based in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And we develop robotic devices for the Department of Defense, NASA, and industry. My company's been around for 20 years, but I've been interested in robotic joints and working on them since 1974. What are some of the applications of robotics you're currently working on? This is uh, S3, Robotic Surrogate 3. And this is a project that started many years ago for NASA. And the idea was to develop a humanoid robot that could help service the space station. The space station ended up being serviced by astronauts. But I continued to work on this design. And I, it utilizes robot joint technology that I had developed for industry over the years through several different government contracts. And I just kept pursuing it and developed robot hands, robot shoulders. There's a lot of applications for uh, exoskeleton designed. I'm, I mean, there's military applications, but there's also hand applications for the handicapped and elderly. We're developing a new version of the robot joint for the joint air ground missile called JAGM. And JAGM, uh, they want a robotic joint in the nose cone of the missile so that it can move the seeker or eyeball to look around for targets. And so we've developed a new, a new uh, gimbal or targeting mechanism for the missile. What does it take to get an idea off the ground? I have cases where things don't go anywhere and I just shelve them and I bring them back, you know, years later. Um, it's just, I think it's all about determination, persistence. Some designs I've worked on for 20 years and um, just don't give up and just keep moving forward. Thomas Edison said, after he'd done the 10,000th experiment, he said, well, I learned uh, 10,000 ways how not to do something. So, you, you, you know, uh, you just, that's all part of the persistence. You, you learn and you may make a lot of stupid mistakes and dumb mistakes, but that's what it takes to, get for, to go forward. How did you learn about Leonardo da Vinci's robotic cart? I think I first heard about him from our family babysitter that was reading little Humpty Dumpty books and he talked about this great guy named Leonardo da Vinci. And in junior high school, I think I thumbed through some books. There was a TV series called The Life of Leonardo in the 1970s that was um, sponsored by Alitalia Airlines. I still remember that. And it had uh, uh, an actor, actually a French actor, um, play Leonardo and they had recreated all these amazing scenes and so forth. In fact, ironically, this was my, uh, the technical advisor was the person that became my mentor two decades later, Carlo Pedretti. And it was just this amazing show and I never forgot it. And as I continued on my career, I, when I got to the university age, I went to the university libraries and looked at Leonardo and then at Leonardo books. And then um, when I was started writing my own books, I kept that interest alive and I, I was surprised to discover that Leonardo had designed robots. I was writing a book and I had a chapter on the history of robotics and I stumbled upon um, an author, Carlo Pedretti, who talked about Leonardo's lost robots. And so eventually I met this man and he asked me to write a paper called Leonardo's Lost Robots. And one of my first projects was to take this sketch by Leonardo, which is a, of a cart, and figure out how this thing worked. Well, my only problem was I couldn't figure it out. But I, I bet, I bet that it did work, and I bet somebody took this idea and somehow it carried on through time. And what I did was I looked at a Japanese design from the Ito period, 18th century, and what the Japanese did is they had a little robot tea carrier and it called, these were called uh, Karakuri, automated toys or uh, automaton. And, and inside the little tea carrier was a big gear, like Leonardo had, a spring, and a cam. A cam is just a, a shaped piece of wood or metal that as it rotates, it trips a lever or a cam follower, and that caused the tea carrier steering wheel up here to turn. So, I could see this steering mechanism, this automatic steering mechanism. And then I looked again at Leonardo's drawing and I could see the, the cams here like petals of a flower and attached to this big gear like the Japanese design. And as this rotated, 
it tripped this lever, causing this lever to move. And underneath it was a steering wheel, which I could see up here. So that helped me to understand that this cart was not just a spring-driven toy, it was actually kind of a robot that could be programmed by changing these cams. So the programmer in the 15th century could have a handful of these little wooden cams and then he would plug those in and that would determine whether this cart went left, right, so forth. We have the steering wheel, we have the big gears like the Japanese design, and then we have these cams. And as the cams rotate, they turn the steering wheel. So, that's the story of Leonardo's robot cart.